I would say my favourite dog. Funniest moment for me. My best moment as a dog walker is... The job I did before being a professional dog walker was... I was in the youth defending team in Manchester. I haven't even told the owners this story. Flying off the cliff, the dog went with her. Yeah, the first I knew about it was when the police phoned me in the morning. But my wife didn't believe I'd done this because I don't naturally do things on camera. Hello. I'm Dawn McCutcheon and I run Never Alone Dog Walking in Stranraer. Hi, I'm Hannah and I'm the owner and founder of Tales and Trails Borrowby. Hello, I'm Emma and I own Barking Wags Dog Walking Services in Stranraer. Um, yeah, hi, my name's Kieran um, and I lead the way in Middle to Manchester. I am a professional treat giver, nose booper, and poo picker. I was trying to come up with something really witty, but I couldn't. So, <laughs> the sixty percent driving, forty percent walking. I take out five or six of people's neurotic children and just let them run loose in a field for an hour. I have wanted to be a dog walk for a long time, really. I had uh, a vision in my head of being a dog walker, if I'm really honest. But when we got our first dog, uh, Terry Ruder, I was surprised by how hard I found it to commute to work, work a day, commute home, walk Rudy before and after, cook tea, and then what was left was spend with the kids, and that what was left just didn't feel like enough. Um, what inspired me to be a professional dog walker is my own boy. I have a 60 kilo German Shepherd Newfoundland cross and just before he was one, he was bitten on the bottom, not once but twice. I was at college doing animal care only because it was the only thing I knew I wanted to do. I wanted to work with animals but I didn't know in what field, why or anything, just I liked animals. The weirdest thing was, I'd been wanting to do it for ages, and it was just working out how I could afford a van. And my sister just said, do it in your car. And honestly, that, that was like, uh, I was like, what? <laughs> and the reason I started the business was because I'd just seen the market for it. I've had loads of amazing moments since becoming a dog walker. It's, it was filled with them, especially, I would say, in the first couple of years when, you, when I was fresh out of the office and I was... I was a, an independent business person for my own, you know, for the first time. It's always a, a moment every week that you can take away from it. For me, my best moments are when I've taken that, like, super reactive dog. So for me to be able to take them and do that one-to-one -one session with them, for them to be fully relaxed and listening to me and enjoy a whole hour with probably not even coming in contact with one other dog and just seeing how happy they are. That for me is my best moments and that's that's the best thing about what I do. My best moment as a dog walker is probably when one of my most nervous dogs started to come out of her shell and started to play with the other dogs. There's a couple of times where you build really close relationships with the dogs that you are and then sadly more often than you'd hope, customers make a decision that they're going to give up the dog. And when that's happened, I've always found that, that really, really hard. My client knows my worst moment because I had to phone her, so it's okay. <laughs> so I would say the worst moment I've ever had in 10 years, and it's only happened to me once in 10 years, was when I was walking a cockapoo called Charlie. And I've been walking him for many years since he was maybe younger than a year, not quite a puppy, but younger than a year. And we were at our usual walk place and another dog came flying around the corner and scared him and he just took off. So about 10 minutes in, I phoned the owner and obviously explained. 
and continued looking for him and he'd actually just went and hid in a wee wooded area so yeah it wasn't even that far away from me but uh, it just took him that 15 minutes or so to get brave enough to come out and show his wee face. I don't have a worse moment regarding dogs but a couple of weeks ago I sent my husband to town to buy me some poo bags. Um, now it seems that our town had run out of poo bags completely apart from it was about 30 pieces of super biodegradable poo bags for about four pounds and when you deal with dogs the size that I do obviously their poos are very large my boy alone is a two-hander um, so once you've picked up a size dog poo that I do and the heat and the moisture Yes, I'm all for these biodegradable compost made out of corn flour poo bags. But if the poo bin's a mile away, um, I have had it where they've started to break down. And by the time I've got to the poo bin, I'm covered in poo. Now, there's only so many baby wipes you can clean yourself with before you call it a bad job. My worst moment, and if I'm really honest, it still haunts me. I, where we kind of are, there's quite a lot of places that are literally just cliffs and things to walk on. Um, and I remember one dog, it was a Labrador, and she was chasing this bird through a field and she was chasing it and running about and just having the best time. And I remember seeing the bird go over flying off the cliff and thinking, oh, that's fine, she will come back. But the dog went with her. The Coast Guard had to come and save her and luckily, luckily not scratch, she was absolutely fine. My worst moment um, when I first started dog walking was I'd taken on a very nervous dog. And I think sometimes there's a confusion with customers who call you and they call you because their dog's got problems. And so they think that a dog walker will fix it. And I think that when you're new to the job and naive, you take dogs that, in hindsight, you, you probably shouldn't have taken. So I walked the dog for a few times on the lead. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting nervous telling the story. Uh, and I let her off, and she just took one look at me, and she just, she just went. She just went. And uh, I thought, I'm over the hour now, so I better tell the owner. So I called the owner and explain and she was out of her mind understandably and she called her sons and her grandsons and we started looking and uh, we spent oh god four hours looking but the, the thing that I knew was that the dog was so nervous was running away from its life so it was, so it was gone and it was hiding somewhere and somebody had to literally stumble upon it and it was seven hours of absolute hell for me. I, I thought uh, I was maybe, you know, like I say, two or three months into my dog walking business. I, 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 what, what, what responsibility we have? I'd not really thought about how, what responsibility we're taking on, and we take on these people's beautiful, you know, dogs. And it was all going through my mind, and I, 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 it was, uh, it was all. My funniest moment in the job is probably, it's not, it's not one, it's probably every single time it happens, but I have quite a lot of pure white or golden dogs and I, every time, every single time they are out, they always come out of like swampy places with that perfect line across them and it gets me every time, I can't stop laughing at them and I know I'm going to have to shower them and everything, but it's, they just look so happy when they're dirty. Funniest moment for me, like, I haven't even told the owners this story. It's one of those stories that I kind of keep to my meets and greets. So like I say, I deal with a lot of dogs that other walkers won't deal with. Um, so I've got a six-month American Bulldog on my books called Hank. He's gorgeous. Um, Hank's just learning the way of the world, like learning his manners, how to approach people, and we're learning recall at the moment. So where I walk Hank is up like a very, very steep incline, um, and the banks are almost built up on either side. On this particular day, it was absolutely torrential downpour, 
first walk of the day, half nine. So I'm busy walking Hank and Hank all of a sudden decides he's going to jump off this bank, but doesn't look where he's jumping and jumped onto me, who then ended up rolling down the hill that we were walking up in what can only be described as a river because I'm at the bottom of the Cleveland Way so all the water runs down so for about 15 minutes me and Hank are rolling around on the floor because he thinks we're playing so yeah I'm not only wet and muddy and covered in bulldog spit and uh, like I say it was my first walk of the day. Well I say probably my funniest moment the one that when I think back always makes me laugh uh, there's a, a kind of older lady I meet on one of my regular walks and she normally just comes a wee doddle with us because her dog likes the, the other dogs and stuff, she's really friendly. Known her for years. Anyway, I met her up the Gallahill one day and she was frantic, searching about because she'd lost her dog. So, you know, I tried to help her for 20 minutes, couldn't find the dog, shouting, looking in all the areas that we'd normally walk them. And I says, I'm going to have to go get another group, but I'll bring them back up here. Uh, so I can look again. So I goes back to the van and she's parked next to me. And then I see this wee face sticking out of her boot. So I phone her and she's like, oh, I've not let him out. She hadn't let him out to begin with. So he's been in there the entire time. <laughs> so my last job before this, like my professional job I was training to be a HCA so a healthcare assistant uh, specializing in spinal cord injuries and it was kind of just I was just plodding along go with motions and then I decided to have a career break after doing that for six years and I just went to go and work in a big high street coffee chain and my husband who was my boyfriend at the time was just like what are you doing like you don't like what you're doing so why don't you go and do something that you want to do <laughs> so my last job, believe it or not, was a receptionist in a doctor's surgery. I used to work, before that I was in the SSBC, so it was, that was a dog. She just fell off the sofa, she's fine. After school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I got a wee job working at International, it's like a women's clothes store. Uh, and I worked my way up in there, I was senior sales advisor or something like that. Uh, and it ended up shutting down, and it wasn't until it started shutting down that I thought, oh, what am I going to do? So that's how I ended up going to college, and that's how I ended up becoming a dog walker. So if it hadn't shut down, I don't know, you know, things might have been different. Uh, so I'm very glad it did. <laughs> the job I did before being a professional dog walker was as... Uh, was in the youth offending team in Manchester, working with young people who had committed offences, managing their court orders, writing reports for them as they were due to attend court for the judges to read and impart sentences. I mean, we're in Manchester here as well, so working with gang membership and, and that sort of thing. And part of the problem, part of the reason, I mean, it is a fulfilling job. I think anybody in, in the industry would say so, but the, there is a high burnout. There's only so long you can do it um, before you've either got to move into management or move into a different area, social care, that sort of thing. Um, but I just felt like I was totally burnt out, um, like I really needed, I really needed to see my children more. So I thought, let's get out. Um, what happened was I decided it was it was a, on a I broke up for Christmas two I had two weeks off and I was still thinking about work about ten days in and I said to my wife I said I've not had a break here I'm still at work in my head so I need to I need to go I need to, I need to leave this the story that people normally ask me about is because it was in the papers and things uh, but it is quite sad one of my owners went missing for I think it was four days uh, a few years ago uh, it was all over the papers all over the news because well he'd gone missing and there was no, no notes left you know he had no family locally 
nobody knew what happened to him. Uh, the first I knew about it was when the police phoned me in the morning because the neighbours had phoned them to say the dogs were, you know, barking and going off their head because the man had left them outside in the garden uh, overnight. Uh, I think, actually, he did that to make sure they were noticed. Uh, but anyway, the police phoned me, so I went round because the dogs wouldn't let them into the garden. There was two. Dixie and Jazz. Uh, and it, well... Three days later, it, they found his jeep it driven off one of our coastal paths. So very, very sadly, he committed suicide. Uh, but I think, looking back, he said a lot of things that maybe if I knew better, I could have seen it. Like there was something off. Like uh, he'd ask me a lot of times if I'd make sure his dogs were were cared for and were more than just a dog walker to some people. And just to be aware that, it, you know, to listen to people when they speak to you. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to say it or not, because I know it's right sad. I just think it's, a, I think it's important, though, for, you know, if people want to become dog walkers, that they don't forget that bit. You know, it's not just the dogs. Yeah, because it's not, you know, it's not just walking dogs in the sunshine. Like, it's so much more than that. My top tip for somebody wanting to become a professional dog walker is a good pair of shoes or boots. So I advise anybody to spend that money, get a good pair of boots. So my top tip if you're going to become a dog walker is to use social media every day because that is the that is in the modern world that is the only way you're going to fill your, fill your case load and make it pay don't give up no matter how hard your day might be you might wake up and it's pouring from the heavens and you go out and none of your dogs do as you're told and you fall down a hill and get covered in mud and you think that office job looks really good but just go to bed have a wine and go to bed it'll be fine being a dog walker people always say to me oh i envy you doing your job um but it's not it's not that simple <laughs> i didn't realize that i'd given myself a certain kind of social status from my jo previous job and that somehow mentally that was lower as a dog walker and that was quite tricky at first it took me quite it took me about five months to adjust to going it doesn't that that social thing that social status thing doesn't doesn't matter but yeah it, it's definitely something that affected me at first something that i warn people you know when we when people say Oh, what are the things to think about? I say, have a think, just have a think about this because it affected me badly. Okay, so my top tip for someone wanting to become a dog walker is do not forget it's a business. I have spoken to a lot of dog walkers that have started up after me, and normally the problems they have are business related. So, pricing. What are their rules and regulations, you know, their policies, all that kind of thing. Now, you've got to love the dogs, obviously. You've got to love working with dogs. You've got to love working outside. But if you want to do it, you have to make the business work or you're not going to be able to do it for very long. It, the, 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 that's the uncomfortableness of everything, isn't it? You know, money dirties everything, doesn't it? But ultimately, we are doing a lovely job, but... We, but the hardest bit is making it pay, make it, making, making it a, a reasonable living from it. Um, but you can, you can if, you, if you're smart. So learn about business, learn about tax, books, all that kind of thing. It can be boring. I don't find it boring, I quite like it. But <laughs> learn about that kind of thing, get savvy about that, and then you make your business less.